But the coolest innovator we're going to hear from next is somebody innovates on food. And that's pretty great, to be a chef who knows how to innovate. Um, Jose Andres uh, is a great restaurant owner, owns some restaurants here in Washington, but he created new types of innovations for restaurants, concepts for restaurants, whether it's in Washington to Puerto Rico to around this country, even Las Vegas, Jose Andres has created innovative restaurants. But he's also been a passionate advocate for food, food safety, hunger programs, because he knows it's not just about what you create, but how you make it about something larger than just yourself. So let me introduce somebody I've always admired and I'm proud now to call a friend, Jose Andres. Thank you very much. And an immigrant. Good morning. You had a good breakfast? I had a lot of coffee, people. My name is Jose. I am a cook. And I arrived in America 23 years ago. But my wife and I, we became American a year ago. And yes, you can clap. Thank you. Because uh, I have three daughters, and I know you, the people of Washington, D.C., my three daughters, also born in Washington, D.C. So they always tell me, Daddy, please don't speak English in front of our friends. Yeah, they're embarrassed. But let me share with you what the reason I'm here today. Uh, as we told you, I am a cook. Some people call us chef, because we boss around. And what I do really is uh, all the time exploring the amazing possibilities that food can bring to all of us, at home and abroad. But I forgot I had a mic. But the fun thing is that if you take a look at those photos on the TV screen, this is what I do. I cook for the few. This restaurant, $400 per person. Don't go so quickly. Go back. $500 a person, this meal. It's worth it, believe me. <laughs> One day we'll take you. But also we are very interested in feeding the many like in this beautiful school in the middle of nowhere in Haiti. Because you cannot feed only the few and not take, taking care of the many. And let me tell you, people, children are the future today. They are the future. But people of Washington, D.C., we have a little problem. Today, those children are expected to live less than their parents. And it's a fact. And how it is possible that at the beginning of the 21st century, today we have a life expectancy today for those children that is lower than only 10, 20 years ago. A third of these children will develop diabetes 2 type. And if you don't have a clue what it is, don't worry. I don't even know what it is either. But I can tell you, it's no good. It's not a way to keep going forward. So let me try to prove a point. The USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, which very much is in charge of guiding America in the way we should be eating, is telling us, if you take a look at that, picture, that we are supposed to be eating almost over 50% of fruits and vegetables. Are you with me? 50%. Who eats 50% of fruits and vegetables every day? Not many. I get it. Don't worry. Not me either. XXXL. <laughs> I get it. But it's something called subsidies, where 
and Capitol Hill, they decide. Subsidies that go into different food productions. Take a look where the subsidies go. To meat and dairy. Take a look how much of those subsidies goes to fruits and vegetables. 1%. Only to help bring those foods at that affordable price to the American people. But still, um, next, still, the food production and those subsidies is going to produce things like wheat or like cotton. What is supposed to be going to help us make healthier goes in big numbers to cotton. What I'm supposed to do? Bite this shirt? No way, Jose. <laughs> so, the subsidies is really going to support the crops that actually is the contrary of what the USDA is actually telling us we need to do. Keep going. So they are telling us to eat like this, but actually the subsidies is going to produce huge amounts of meat everywhere, like that, which is actually not the best for our environment anymore. So the huge amount of America is devoted to produce animals, beef, cattle, pork, chicken. Nothing wrong with that, believe me. I eat a lot of burgers, too. But actually, the government still keeps telling us that this is the way we have to eat. So what the government tells us is not supported on the Hill with the actions our leaders are taking to make us all healthier. And take a look at the problem. This is what is called the food desert. No food desert. Food desert. We have millions in America that they don't have today, in the most powerful country in the history of the world, access to something we will recognize as food. This is a food desert, even it looks more like food desert. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm making words in English at this point in my life. You can even understand the nuances of my pronunciation. <laughs> this is what we need. This is not a food desert. But our communities are lacking this simple thing as a market with fresh vegetables and fruits. So our government, again, and sorry, I am so repeating this slide, is telling us to eat like that. But actually, America and the world is going into that direction. And this is the problem of obesity in America. Take a look since 85 all the way to 2010, 12. This is the amount of states that the obesity pandemic is growing exponentially year after year. Huh. Still, our government is telling us that's what we need to do, but ain't happening. Next. And this is what's happening with meat consumption worldwide, that the numbers are stratospheric. Next. So guys, I have a solution. Because actually, even I sound a bit picky with our government, it's all the contrary. They're great people. And they're great leaders. And our congressmen and senators and presidents and first ladies, they really trying to help with the laws. But sometimes the laws, they don't solve every problem, people. Hey, Washington DC, taxation without representation. That'd be our next war to make sure every one of those votes in this room count in Congress. That right now you know, our vote doesn't count, and you can clap, yeah, you can clap. Because we don't have representation in Washington, D.C., and we will change that. Why we need to change that? Because we need to be changing the ways. But because not everything can be found a solution through government, as the people, we have the power in our own ways to be doing those changes. And this is an answer to all these meat and food problems I show you. I am doing a restaurant called Beefsteak. 
Vegetables unleash. What that means? Beefsteak? Vegetables unleash? Is this guy going nuts? Believe me, that's what my daughters tell me. This is what we are creating. The vegetable man. Where vegetables are not healthy and vegan and vegetarian and good for your health. But vegetables are fun, crazy, nighty, they like hip hop, they go in the jacuzzi. I like hip hop. When I go to LA, I rock. Mr. Potato going around the wall peeling himself. So I'm giving you my solution. I'm putting you a doodle to tell you a concept I'm about to open near here, George Washington University, to only show you that it's up to every one of us to come up with solutions. Not finger pointing to somebody else to fix the problem for us, but us trying to go ahead and trying to be part of the solution. Not just only bitching about the problem. So let me show you this for me now, with perfect English by me where you're going to get a glimpse of what this concept is all about. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's go with the doodle now. I am Jose Andres. My team and I, we have fed millions of people in our restaurants over the past 20 years. Some will say very well. As a chef, I am always exploring the possibilities of wet food. Amazing, delicious, fresh food can do for the people of America, the people of the world how food can make their lives better. The mission of our company, Think Food Group, is to change the world through the power of food. And we are always thinking of new ways to do that for more and more people beyond those who eat in my restaurants. Taking a simple idea and looking at it in a new way and creating some magic. We've now been working on a new way to change a lot of people's lives through how they eat. Something we are very excited about and I want to share it with you. There is an important opportunity for us to have more influence in how our country and our planet feeds its people in ways that makes them happy, gives them good choices, and fits their way of life and their wallets. I can keep opening restaurants to feed millions over the next years, but let me be bold. I want to one day, soon, feed millions in a day and feed them well and make them happy and want to come back again and again. This is a 21st century, people. And why can't there be more options for food that is an adventure, that gives you lots of new choices and that you can get without spending a lot of money or taking a lot of time? We are all very busy in today's world and don't have many choices for good food fast. A lot of fast food, maybe, but not good food fast created by a chef, not a corporation. So if you wanted to be bold, what will you serve? Most every restaurant and fast food place focuses on meat as the centerpiece, with vegetables and grains of potatoes on the side. Hey, I love meat, but every day I eat less and less of it. And you know, I really love vegetables. They are so much more interesting and have so many more possibilities, different ones every season. They don't deserve to be on the side of anything. They should be center stage. So we are creating a new vegetable concept because a tomato or an asparagus or a broccoli is just as powerful as a cow or a chicken, people. We want to show our country, our world, a new way to eat that they will like and want to come back for many, many times. Focus really on vegetables, fresh and direct from our friends, the farmers. Food that tells a story. Have you ever listened to a tomato? If you take the time, vegetables have amazing stories to tell. And the moment is now, people. No one else is doing what we plan to do. This is not a salad bar. This is not vegetarian or vegan. This is not a health food restaurant. This is great food, fresh, good for you, 
made right in front of you while you watch and affordable to the many. And this isn't a fast food restaurant either. It's what the people of America call fast casual. We will serve people many good things, all in one bowl. You start with the main attraction, vegetables, flash prepared right there in front of you, as many kinds as you want. Then you will choose your grain, quinoa, rice, orso, couscous. Next, the sauce. America loves sauce. Spicy tomato, green herb pesto, yogurt, miso. Then the vegetables will go on top because they are already cooked. Now, toppings. Roasted pumpkin seeds, crispy shallots, crispy seaweed, your choice. And we keep building if you want. You can put some fresh salad and then choose a dressing of your liking. Lemon and olive oil, soy sauce and olive oil. Wow. And to end, if you want, hey, your protein, some meat or another protein like smoked salmon, maybe an egg or half an avocado. That's it. The sunshine and bounty of America in a bowl. Simple, delicious, fresh, nourishing. Made quickly in front of you, giving you the best quality and a great value. Is that a meal or what, people? So why do I know this concept is going to work? Well, believe me when I tell you that I have more than a hunch. My team and I, we have fed millions of people in our restaurants over the past 20 years. And every day, every day they request more and more vegetables. I know that what America needs and America is not able to find are more restaurants where vegetables are at the heart. That's why our new vegetable concept is a concept that America needs for today and for tomorrow. All right, so we're getting very close to the challenge, right? But you, I have 20 restaurants so far. And I'm going to touch wood. So far, all are doing great. But this is a big risk. Because people don't want a bowl of vegetables. I can drink of vegetables, but I'm going to eat all the vegetables myself. But let me tell you, I love risks. And one of my favorite phrases in the history, and I want you to remember that phrase, came from uh, Winston Churchill, one of the great presidents, Great Britain, World War II times, that in the middle of all the bombs coming from Germany, in the middle of London, he said, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Do you have enthusiasm? Do you have enthusiasm? Yes. Then it's no possibility of failure, people. Because always it'll be a tomorrow. So we are doing this. Why? Because we want America to have access to this. And we want one plate at a time giving the children of tomorrow the possibility to do what they are supposed to be doing. Grow as healthy individuals to be an amazing part of a community where the future looks like a beautiful horizon that we are all aiming to and where success is around the corner only because of plate. We cannot be talking anymore about Washington, D.C. You have a guy like me on 7th Street, which is actually overweight, and three streets down the road in Washington, D.C., I have a guy is hungry. Food today is part of the many problems we face. But food can be part of every solution. With the right way to produce food, we will take care of the environment. The right way to produce food, it will be no hungry people in America and overseas. With the right way to produce food, we'll keep creating jobs really invested in the areas we want it to be. The rural areas of America should be where the economy of America keeps growing forward. And a restaurant like this can make it happen. So this is my challenge to you guys. Because we are in Washington, D.C., and we are near Congress. And I do believe that we can make a lot of things happening from this amazing city of ours. 
My challenge to you is a business challenge. I show you what I did. It may work or may not work, but it's already a great start. Even on this failure, it's going to be a good way forward because we will learn from it. I'm challenging you by focusing on the appetites of your generation. I challenge you to come up with an irresistible food concept that features natural fruits, vegetables, and sustainable meat and fish. You know what you like to eat. And in the year 2050, we're going to have 9 billion people in this planet. And we need very smart people to start thinking, how are we going to feed this planet in a great way, in a tasty way, in a way that doesn't damage our environment, or in a way that doesn't make us unhealthy? You have in front of you the amazing possibility to change the way America and the world will be fed. And I know you like food. I know you choose the restaurants you like. But they start thinking, you are going to vote with your plate. And every time we eat, it's a statement about how you want our city, our country, and our planet to be run. So this is the best challenge I could give you. Just help me make it happen. And just to end, I want you to remember this phrase. This is from a Frenchman in the 1800s. He's my hero because he was a food philosopher. And he said, anybody here tell me what you eat and I will tell you who you are? Anybody heard that phrase before? Yes or no? Yes. Poor, that was that guy. But he also said, the future of nations will depend on the manner on how they feed themselves. The future of this nation will depend in you, your generation, coming with the right ideas to make change happen. Thank you very much. I'll say he's too modest. You know that the President Obama just last July awarded him the outstanding uh, award for Americans by choice. So congratulations to you.